Okay, and now let me introduce our our guest today. Uh, it's my pleasure to host uh, my special friend uh, Randall Spiner. Randall, uh, warm welcome to you. How are you? Thank you. I'm excited, like usual, when uh, I speak, and I'm happy to be here, so that you uh, that we have a meaningful dialogue today. Hopefully, that's my intention, at least. Okay, let me let me uh, introduce you. Uh, so, Randolph is a transformation facilitator, coach, and a student. Uh, in his commitment to help evolving our systems, Randolph co-founded the CoGrow Space. After two decades of working with leaders, teams, and business units in global enterprises, to bring a different voice to enterprise transformation work. I'm really curious to hear this different voice tonight. Uh, as a global, global citizen, Randolph collaborates with leaders in human transformation. Uh, Randolph takes great satisfaction in offering his guidance to practitioners as they realize their full potential and capacity to in regenerative transformation. He's committed to design and lead cohorts for teams of leaders and change agents to enable effective change in their organizations. Thank you. Is there anything you would like to add on top of this, Randolph? Uh, I'm the father of two girls, and I'm originally from Salzburg in Austria. Uh, I love nature and uh, yeah, anything else uh, we can talk about later. Awesome. So, so today we will be guided by Randolph, and we are going to engage in a collaborative workshop. Levering, leveraging the four lenses of integral agility. And as a first uh, activity in this session, I'm going to divide you across a few breakout rooms so that you can have like a proper check-in in a small groups. Just say hello and uh, and hopefully maybe during the uh, your 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 check-in round, if you could also briefly share your experience and feeling on on to what extent agile transformations bring the change you would like to see in organizations that would be like the first context setting yeah. discussion um so let me just now sh split you across the rooms um there is uh we, you spend like five minutes or four minutes in the rooms. I'll create, let's say, five rooms should be more or less okay. All right. So see you back in in uh, in five minutes. Have fun. Okay, so the rooms are now open. Are you there? A taste. Yeah, uh, thank you for that, Piotr. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and what we would like to have is a meaningful dialogue, right? Like I have already said uh, at the beginning. And also, um, what I want to introduce you to is a um, practice that I have done a couple of times in a physical setting. Uh, and we, uh, we it's a little experiment as well today. So we, we try it here. And um, it's it opens dialogue, you know, and it surfaces stuff. And that's the main purpose of uh, doing such an exercise, for example, with a leadership team or uh, with uh, a group where you want to uh, find a relatively fast way to align 
and uh, you can you can run this practice with up to uh, you know 27 people that's possible in a room maybe even a bit more but 24 21 that's that's the optimum before i start um, i just want to give you a little bit about my stance on transformation and um the first statement would be that our systems, meaning me or we or any organizational systems are run by patterns which are invisible. And in order to facilitate transformation or to enable transformation, the system needs to see itself. Um, so we need to, you, we, we are used to, you know, cover up and, uh, not be with what's uncomfortable, but what we actually want to do is we want to include what, what comes up in, um, yeah, conflict situations or in diff when we have different, uh, perspectives and Probably the most important thing to know is that we don't know what we don't know. And so a certain openness, that's also a very important uh, yeah, thing for me, at least. Listening is a key for having a, a meaningful dialogue. And this is also a key, a meaningful dialogue is actually important to you know, get out of this debate stance where we always are kind of repeating our same arguments and play the ping, the ping pong game. As we want to integrate different perspectives to move on. So that's a little bit about uh, my stance. The, the integral for lenses is, uh, or it's like, uh, fundamental perspectives that we see in all languages. Like you have a first person uh, perspective and maybe I can also share. The mural where we are going to be. Can you see the, the screen share? So, um, yeah. Yep. Yes, thank you. Yeah. And I also just want to see you. So I, oh, oops, I arranged this here. My windows a little bit. So what uh, we see here is uh, uh, the, the eye perspective, which is uh, leadership and culture. So it's about mindset. It's about developmental maturity of uh, leaders and team members. It's also about uh, how we are thinking patterns, our patterns of emotions. So that's out of the eye perspective. Um, then uh, we also have um, the we perspective. So this uh, is the, the organizational culture. So it's the relationship uh, domain, right? It's about also uh, unspoken rules. It's about uh, maybe the collective conscience, right? Where you feel, ah, that's possible to do here, but uh, if I go over this threshold, maybe that's not so good. Um, what you also can see is uh, that there are four dimensions. Uh, there is uh, the vertical dimension, uh, which is the individual side on the top, which is represented by the leadership uh, mindset uh, on the left and 
um, by practices and behavior on the right. So that's more or less, if you think about that our behavior and the way we practice is the, the expression of our inner world on the outside, then this is the individual part on the top. On the bottom, you have the collective, right? You have the we, the culture, and the relationships. And on the right side, you have uh, the organizational architecture, meaning um, the structures, the policies, governance, the ability to change uh, structures. That's That would be in uh, that lens. And uh, what we want, what this, what this framework helps us is to encourage to go beyond. Uh, we will share the mural link in a in a in a moment. So what we want, what we what this encourage encourages is uh, that we uh, look beyond our uh, go to place. Right, we all tend to have one perspective that we use to solve problems. And we want to uh, go towards perspectives that we usually are not uh, so familiar with. Yeah. Are there, are there any questions at this point or how does this resonate with you? Uh, are you going to dig into these different uh, domains that you talk about here to, to understand the differences between them? Um, at a level detail we won't get to today. We will get a level detail and we will also use this for an exercise. So this is basically uh, to warm us up. Okay. Um, so let's get rid, rid of this here. Um, sorry, Randolph, quick question from me. Yeah. Can you repeat? Uh, ah, okay, no, I see here, in and out. Okay, I can see here, the dimension. Fine. Exactly, these are the dimensions. You have the individual on the top, right? And the collective on the bottom. And you have the inner, uh, and you have the inner and you have the outer. So the I perspective, that's leadership, uh, uh, that's leadership and mindset. That's wrong here, let me just change that. That's leadership and mindset. That's the thinking patterns, you know? And you also, it's 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 from, nobody can look into ourselves, right? But uh, it's the way we think, uh, the, the way we make sense, the, na the, the way we value uh, things. Um, so for, ex for example, and uh, I already start to introduce the exercise because we want to, uh, we, what's also important is that um, evolution happens uh, through uh, becoming aware what's limiting us and also becoming aware where the prototype of the future is already uh, showing up. So the exercise that we are going to do today is basically going through those four uh, quadrants and identifying what's unhealthy and what's healthy in a given system. And this is what, also what I would uh, suggest in a um in a in a in a in a setup where you are physical or where you do this with the team and to to make it practical so for example uh in the i quadrant it's really important it's really useful to um, make sentences uh from the i perspective right so for example um something um healthy could be I question my beliefs and that's a that's a that's a, an example something which is unhealthy you know in a given maybe in, it, it depends on the system and it depends on uh, the people that are in, in the room right to come up with uh, those stat statements but an example could be what's unhealthy could be i want to win so that's the i perspective the practice and pa practices and behavior perspective this is where uh, we basically show up. So it's uh, how we uh, fulfill our role. It's the individual uh, practice uh, that we have. It's so in this, in this, in, on this side, we uh, use uh, 
um, he, she, it, or even the concrete, uh, for example, like here. An example could be the product Rona all it is well established and owns priorities. This could be a healthy expression of the given system. Um, another example, for example, the retrospective it a practice is left out. So that's the two individual perspectives, the inner and the outer. And then on the collective side, um, we have uh, basically the same. So uh, relationship, uh, relationship and culture, meaning uh, also the, 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 the conscience I mentioned it before. So really, what are the unspoken rules? This is what we want to uh, look at here. And a, an example could be for could be um, we embrace conflict conflict as we grow. Um, unhealthy could be we re we remain silent when our boss's opinion disturbs us. So that's the culture perspective. You could also say that culture is the collective mindset, right? And uh, you always uh, are a situation, a given uh, organization is always showing up in, from, in all those four perspectives. So it's four lenses that you can use uh, to look at a given situation, to look at the given team, to look at uh, maybe a bigger unit, or even a whole organization, depending on, on what you put into the middle, into the center, you know, what's the focus system that you that we are talking about. And then last but not least, uh, the lower right. So that's the expression of the collective. So, you know, that's the, uh, the that's the manifestation of the culture in the organizational structure, in policies, in uh, any governance rules, and so on. Uh, an ex example here could be their structure continually improves around value streams. Maybe that's valuable and healthy in a given, in a given culture. Something unhealthy could be their performance uh, management process focuses on individual performance. So these are the four quadrants. And uh, this is also the essence of what we would like to do in the exercise that I will uh, uh, introduce you uh, in a minute after. Uh, yeah, we check in how this resonates or uh, if there are any questions regarding this. So this is really uh, just uh, as much uh, about the integral for lenses so that you can start to do this exercise. Yeah, we, and that's possible to do that with a, with a group of people. And it's not, it's, it's not important to, uh, it's not a black and white game. It's not important to, you know, that's exactly there, but the main purpose is the dialogue that we have. So, any questions at this point? Um, or rather, this, this, did this speak to your question? Yeah, we don't hear you, but yes, I, I said absolutely. <laughs> and I think there was another question before if we could go one level deeper. Is this level good now? Um, so that was my question, and it it is and not quite isn't because there are overlaps in some of the categories you identify in the quadrants. And so what I'm trying to see if if I have clarity in terms of you, if you were to hand me the framework and say, Go talk to this group of people and help them understand this. Where those lines of distinction are that you would draw 
so that you had clarity of what belongs in which quadrants. I still don't really understand. Maybe getting a better definition of each of the quadrants. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be pedantic. You know, uh, it's, it's just, uh, I'm trying to understand how, if, I always think about these things. How, how could I replicate this? If someone looked at me this and said, can you use this? Can you go forward and work with a group of people to help them understand this? And I'm still not there yet, but it's early. The night is young, so. Yeah, I mean, um, I would say we try it out uh, yeah. in, in the practice and uh, we we do a debrief later anyway, but as a guidance, uh, maybe, it's, maybe, maybe it's important to look at uh, the dimensions first, right? So on the upper two uh, quadrants, you have the individual perspective, but it's mm -hmm. about the individual. So, and the inner part, inner of the individual is what I think, you know? So if you, if you, if you want to fill in this quadrant, you, you put yourself into the perspective of the individual. So how might people in our organization, organization think? What's their thinking? And if you ask, your, ask yourself about what's healthy and what's unhealthy, of course, this is, you can also look inside, you know, we have all kinds of uh, demons in us uh, uh, or uh, uh, voices that we don't like so much. So this is also, this can be also uh, be there, right? But also what might people think? And, uh, and on the other side, the outer is what we can actually observe. It's the objective. Uh, uh, perspective of the individual. So how do people show up? What's their behavior? So that's for the upper part. For the no, I, I, I understand that. And so the concern I have is that, um, you know, any organization, there's going to be a distribution of personality types, like there is in society, right? Uh, when you start to see a behavior set that starts to become more common across the organization. It's usually not because you just only hired those people. Could be, but generally, it's because you've created policies, procedures, and reward systems that have instilled that kind of behavior. So yeah. I don't know if it's, as, if it's as cleanly delineatable that you could say, well, these are how these individuals think, because it's really driven by how the organization is rewarded and, and in some cases punished people for thinking certain ways. Mm -hmm. um, so you really drive it from that. You, I guess you could see the manifestations in the individual and say, well, did we just all hire the same kind of guy? <laughs> or did we, did we create these monsters by how we define what as an organization we wanna be? Maybe that's how to look at it so that you can, you can understand those implications. Yeah, as I said, it's not black and white. Yeah, and uh, and I think the main purpose is to consciously move through different perspectives and consciously go uh, uh, look at situations, organizations uh, from different different perspectives. And and of course, it's a matter. It's always a matter of alignment of language in the uh, mm -hmm. given case uh, to find each other. Yeah, and. Right. That's also a purpose of the exercise. So let's let's try it. Okay. Yeah. I would try it, try it from the woke perspective. You know. The woke perspective. From a woke perspective, is you're good, so is you're fine, you're bad, you're not fine. You have to adapt, adjust yourself to my thinking, what is right and wrong, and be very paternalistic. You know this kind of thing, like the MBTI. You're in this square, so I keep you. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, there are voices in the organization here. It's about hey, what do we value? What do we not value in a given culture? Yeah, yeah. I, really, I really like your examples, uh, uh, Mark. Like, did we hire yet another the same person, <laughs> the same profile, <laughs> or do we keep growing? Same? Mark, what what is your feeling if you have just a full team of mid aged white male? Yeah, <laughs> this is pretty typical. Like, uh, and it's very narrowing down, right? It's very kind of once you get to this path, it's very difficult to uh, to notice this, right? And I, I, I personally like treat this this frame 
as as a frame actually yeah exactly like the, makes me aware of the four four lenses and, and allows me to to see my actions and, and our uh, hiring process from from the, these four perspectives so so that you know helps to avoid bias good thank you now um i have to tell you some more things to, to get you into the uh, exercise so i will just uh uh maybe well let let, let, let i leave the uh, the examples that's good uh so what we are going to do is now is that we will put you uh we will offer you to go into four breakout rooms so for it there will be four breakout rooms for every quadrant one and uh the breakout room number uh one starts at uh leadership and culture Breakout room number two starts at uh, practices and behavior and so on. We uh, will give you, and then you, then you have about three to four minutes to align as a group uh, from this perspective, what's healthy for you, what's unhealthy. That's in the first round. So every group is in one, per, in one quadrant always. After we give you a signal, you move on clockwise to the next one. And so that we have an overview, please take your uh, token with you. And when you arrive at a given, uh, at, at the next quadrant, you will see things that the group has already left there, right? Because a group was before you. When you agree with the statement, you give a checkbox. If you don't agree, you put an X. If it bustles you, you uh, put a question mark. And we will go through this um, quadrant by quadrant. So there are four rounds, about three minutes at, at each point. And you have, uh, remember, you ha uh, uh, when you go there, you first need to read what's there. And you need to uh, uh, see what's there. And then you can add stuff that you can, uh, that, that, that you, you can come up with. And then you will arrive at the last quadrant, which where you started, and you can see what happened. And just stay there for a minute to also say, oh, here I agree, here I don't agree, and here I have questions. And then we will come back and we will do a debrief and especially look at those things that we don't agree um, about. Can, and, can you share the link for the for the board? Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. I do. Um, Now we don't have a common organization, so we we need to do put something into the middle. And uh, as we did at the XP uh, in the big room, um, I think we should. I mean, my proposal is to put the agile community into the middle. So, what are unhealthy patterns that we see in the agile communities? What are healthy patterns that we can see in the agile community? And by this, we go through the lenses is this uh clear enough to start yeah i guess so i put um, the link to your mural into the chat And uh, Piotr, you can open the rooms. And yes. remember, please take your tokens with you when we prompt you to go to the next quadrant in a in a clockwise order. Yeah, I'm just waiting for people to show up in the mural. Uh, I'll split you into four rooms. Well, we know which room we're in. And there will be a number in the room meeting. Okay. And we'll correlate those numbers to these. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Thank you, Mark, for clarifying. Break at rooms. If you need help, you can call us.
Okay, four breaker rooms. Uh, let's try this one. Okay, there are four or three persons in each room, so mm -hmm. sounds very nice. Okay, so so the timing. When it comes to timing, we expect you to spend like four minutes in each quadrant. Yeah, yeah, and we and and we will prompt you to move on. Yeah, so relax until we prompt you, and then you move on. Okay, see you in a while, guys. Good luck. Way too short. Way too short. <laughs> <laughs> What else? How was it? Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, of course, uh, in a real setting, uh, much more time is needed, and we also learned that uh, that you, some of you, didn't uh, didn't see the Zoom messages, the messages to move. Yeah. Oh. So a learning for us is to uh, really that we that we uh, that we use the tokens and tell you with this, hey, that's where you need to be now. Uh, anyway, any any voices, because we are at the half, uh, we 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 are uh, we are the, the, the practice has two parts, right? The debrief is also important. But is there anything in the room right now? Uh, in the group number one, we had a nice conversation. We shared our ideas and people are reflecting and say, what the heck are you talking about? So it was a good conversation. Yeah. And we were constructively debating. Yeah, I mean, you know, that was the start. Thank you, Pierre. Anything else? Because you know, this is, let's say, this what we just have done. If you if you imagine you be you are in a room with uh, a leadership group, this is setting the stage until now, because now it becomes really interesting. Because now we will move uh, with the whole group from one quadrant to the uh, next, and the group who started there facilitates. Uh, what's interesting namely the conflicts right so that's why we that's why it's important that we actually mark the um, items that are already here where we have a check mark it's okay there we are aligned where we have an x or a, a question mark we want to go into uh, a conversation about uh, for example if we look at the lower right quadrant there is a question mark with the bonus system. So uh, I could ask uh, who or what was meant with bonus system because somebody probably has written this. Marvin. I put the question uh, to say uh, bonus system can be good or, or, or or not good so uh, it's not the problem in bonus system but the problem is how we implement it mm -hmm. so i put uh, the question mm -hmm. so, so who, exactly who wrote the who wrote the that this this comes from me actually mm -hmm. uh, on this point and and it was exactly meant like like you just put it um i mean if it's in focused on individual performance and performance appraisal so the importance is put on on the individual performance not on the collective one so depends on the design of the bonus system so uh, that was meant with this yeah so it is yeah not not so good if it's uh, focused on pure uh, individual performance and I will add a complexity in it. It's also very cultural. Because if you go in the north, like Copenhagen, or you go in the north, it's the collective work is just how they work. It's very natural. If you go in Morocco, you lose everyone. Hmm. It's not bad. It's cultural. So we have to adjust to the context. So maybe the past to go think collective will be a little bit different. And just to add, um, we're looking at the diagram 
that shows where the I, the individual, is important, as is the other quadrants. So uh, that's probably, I think, a downside of Agile. There is too much emphasis on the lower, the lower left. There's not enough attention given, for example, to the individual. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I mean, at at the moment we are, uh, uh, and, and and we will get there. At the moment we are deep brief. We are just uh, uh, talking about the bonus system, right? And uh, my question would be, if we put ourselves in the situation of the workshop, because we have now, I think, an alignment, because uh, I updated this uh, this post-it with the bonus system focuses on individual performance. So I would ask now, uh, are we aligned now that this is unhealthy, that we focus on individual performance? And Pierre, you said there's uh, cultural differences where you need individual performance. Is this how I, understand, I can understand it? It's okay for me. Mm. Oh, you have to balance it. You see, the way to understand that the collective matters is more complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, I say here in Morocco, but uh, I was a lot in the Middle East, it's the same thing. India, the same thing. China, the same thing, too. So we just have to understand. We can say, okay, we can handle over. There's a lot of uh, this conversation exists since over 15 years in the Aja community. And, and we, we want to go there, but here you have to fight against something else. Is about uh, HR policies, company policies, and you have to. Uh, uh, even if you rise it up from at the leadership level, uh, you say, "Am I free? Uh, uh, do I have the mandate to even to change the corporate policy? Mm. Do I have the mandate to adjust the HR policies mm. to allow to get the the bonuses at the team level, and then maybe spread out through the team members?" Yeah. And see, we have different perspectives on the same matter. And this is what we need uh, this exercise for, to actually align on it. Because if we align uh, what is healthy and what is unhealthy in our organization from the four perspectives, that we, then we also know where we are. We also are aligned on what's limiting us. And we also uh, are aligned on where we want to go. And this is, we, this is what we need to actually take a step so I think this is an, uh, this is enough. Uh, this one example is enough, uh, and you you see this this can be a lengthy process, right? But still, mm -hmm. it's a very uh, relatively fast process to uh, get a group of leaders aligned quickly. And of course, uh, there is there will be a lot of emotion. There will be a lot of energy in the room yeah, during this exercise. Uh, I will make it. I will, I will use it next week. Yeah, I have a large kickoff in Cambridge, and uh, this will be the kickoff. Yeah, call me. I will help you. No, I want to do it well. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> um, as we come, as we come to um, towards towards the end, and I want to use uh, the rest of the time for a Q and A, and for any questions. Uh, yeah. Is there anything in the room? I have a question, uh, maybe in uh, the the second quadrant. Mm -hmm. Outer, uh, individual outer. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, can it be uh, product vision? Pro, pro, uh, about product of an organization. What we uh, output. Of, a, of, a, of work. You mean uh, measuring the product? For example, yes. The, uh... the answer is yeah. yes. It's yeah. meaning. It's yeah. meaning, cohesion, vision. Why am I, why I am here? The, the, the product vision would be a practice. So I would say uh, if that that would that would be there yeah now if we go uh to the helicopter view uh, any are there any is there any resonance about the exercise itself so um because we have a lot of, we had a lot of discussions in our group about and there was just the two of us mm -hmm. about 
what's really meant and and is this really a relationship and culture issue or is it an organizational architecture is there or is it a practice of behavior when you sit in a room with a group of executives or leadership people um, especially if you've got a tight out team you're working with do you run into a lot of definitional challenges and how do you stop a session from going sideways because people want to start debating to you know this tastes great feel you know Phil's last kind of thing um, where they want to argue where something belongs versus just getting to the core issues. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, that, that, that this tendency can exist, you know, uh, and then it's about um, uh, I, I, the way I do it is uh, how I did it today, because it's actually uh, also about alignment uh, more than uh you know if, whether is it, it whether if it is there or not yeah what mm -hmm. we want to identify is what's unhealthy and what's healthy in our organization and uh with time we will align also what 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 uh, needs to be in which quadrant so i wouldn't put the emphasis on uh, the emphasis on uh the clear delineation because sometimes it's just not uh, so uh, so clear so so you would just go ahead and just throw it out there and then allow it to naturally morph through the discussion to where it belongs or split it yeah and have maybe part of one quadrant and part of the other quadrant exactly uh and uh, and and it turned out to be uh i mean usually i mean at least in in the occasions when i did it and i did it uh with uh up up to uh 28 uh, managing directors in the room of course of course there is a, it, it is really uh, uh yeah so maybe sometimes tense but that's also something that we need to learn right so um and we want to have this energy in the room okay we want to have the dialogue we also want that it becomes uh energetic uh, at some points thank okay, you Maybe I have, oh, I have uh, a, sorry. Oh, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I have a question. Uh, so if and then based on your experience, uh, if you were to do a, if you, you, when you did these workshops, what's the approximate time that you took for these workshops? Yeah, you should take much more time, of course, than we have here. Um, so uh, you should, you should, uh, consider that you want to do maybe a little bit more of the introduction but not much more because we really don't want to overwhelm we just want to use it as quickly as possible uh, so uh, maybe two hours something like that and is there a time boxing that goes uh, for example if this session uh, the the collaborative session would take 10 minutes or 15 minutes and the discussion part take so much time is there a voting system where you would vote on what are the most important things that you want to talk about no the, an important thing is to keep the, the to keep the time boxes during you wander through the quadrants small so that we don't get too many uh post-its right we want to focus on the essentials and with that you also make sure that uh, you can really talk about every item where there is misalignment because that's what we want to do so keep the time boxes at the beginning short or maybe maybe you sense into you sense into the room right uh where they are you don't want to go ahead without them having any sticky there yeah but don't let them uh go uh, don't don't let the time boxes become too big because otherwise okay. Yeah. Thank you. Will be forever. I Thank can you. definitely see a, a, a space for like uh, eating together some summer during the workshop. Like maybe after the initial debrief and sorting out the the easy conflicts when they are left with a small number of outstanding issues before they jump into this. Let's take them to to some lunch or some food right and after food let let them jump into the the, the toughest issues 
<laughs> well, maybe during the aperitif and yeah. drinking alcohol, maybe that will be more honest. <laughs> yeah, you you don't want to discuss things on an empty stomach, right? People are hangry. <laughs> yeah, maybe, or you want the emotions in the room. Depends on the type. Uh, Marvin. Yes. Um, my question is about uh, the why you divide each quadrant in two parts, uh, good or not good, and in your explain explanation, you say that's not about white or black. So what uh, what about uh, not divide the the each quadrant or uh, maybe divide it in three or four parts, not only uh, two. Mm -hmm. Uh, with not black and white, of course, it's also true uh, uh, that it's not black and white. What I meant with not black and white is that uh, the delineation of the quadrants is not so important. But of course, it's important to align on what's limiting us and where do we already see the uh, future in that we aspire for in place, right? Because, I mean, transformation is a step-by-step -step process and we want to actually creatively work with those things that we agree as an organization that limits us. Yeah? And we ideally want to identify uh, strategies in each quadrant. Um, so uh, it's important um, that, that we, that we uh, identify the healthy and the unhealthy aspects. Awesome. Yeah. Does this speak to your okay. question? Um, Reben. Yeah, I was just wondering if there's a place where I can read more about the integral four lenses. Um, there's for sure. There's the book uh, written by uh, Michael Spade and Michelle Mahou. Ah, okay. Uh, called Agile Transformation. And uh, yeah, they also. Do you have a link for that book or? Yes, we will put it into the chat. That'd be great. Thank you. And uh, actually, there are many uh, pretty well-known integral practitioners uh, in also in the near the agile space. So, uh, if you have written, read the book Re "Reinventing Organizations," of course, that's also a, Malou is also an integral practitioner. Oh, okay. And uh, if you have read an everyone culture by robert keegan that's also it so yeah any other question or anything else that is yeah one well, for me where where does the um, integral agile community meet that's a good question thank you Let's work with that. But uh, for sure, uh, um, the collective edge uh, offers the opportunity to uh, uh, join a community after you go through the first training, the gate into this world, which is the master camp. And the next session takes place in December. You said the collective edge. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, I mean, the integral community, uh, that's a bit bigger because uh, the, this integral agile transformation framework is uh, applying integral to the field of organizational development. But the integral movement is much uh, bigger than that. So uh, there are many communities out there that share knowledge in different fields. Yeah. So um, maybe one important thing is uh, what's what's good about this debrief part, right? This, uh, this is also the perfect part to go into developmental conversation with 
the leadership team that is in the room. So whenever there is something uh, brought up, that's the chance for uh, yeah going into a dialogue to uh, also let certain stuff, meaning in invisible psychological patterns that usually rule us, show up and actually hold them, also hold the emotions that that come with it, and thereby um, also create a transformative space. Mm -hmm. So I uh, want to emphasize that the second the second part of the exercise is actually where we uh, yeah, pick the fruits, let's say. Deliberately develop mental conversations that we lead during this time. Yeah, thank you, Piotr. Right, it feels like we are getting to the end. Uh, my habit uh, at the end of the sessions is that I usually ask our guests to end the session with kind of one high level takeout message for the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have something like this, Randall. Yeah, I think that's a good idea to, to do a checkout uh, and maybe a one word checkout or a one breath checkout. And so, what is it that you take away? What's the golden nugget that you want to share with the rest of the group? And whoever wants to, please go ahead. Is this fine for you, Piotr? Absolutely, yeah. Well, okay, I'll, I'll start. I, I think viewing uh, most, most methodologies look at the organization and how to change organizational behavior and and coming at it from the two distinct perspectives of the individual, the group, and trying to understand how, how those two interactions work um, is different from most of the things I've seen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mark. Mm -hmm. Now, I was uh, talking a little earlier with uh, 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 Nas. Is that the right way to spell your name? Anas. Anas, okay. Uh, and I was talking about the transformation uh, responsibility. It's usually if there's one person's responsibility, it's a huge task. So it has to be a collaborative effect, effort. Yeah. And for it to be a collaborative effort, you need to find true change agents. You need to find people who are really into the transformation, not who are willing to work on not only at the leadership level, but also at the bottom at the at the ground level at the team levels mm -hmm. right so it's uh when when you think about transformation that itself has a roadmap uh we have to derive metrics around the roadmap what is our expectation when it comes to uh, agile transformation if, whether it be team level or program level or portfolio level organization level like what is our what are some of the measures that we want to deliver uh by the end of one year and uh, keep checking on the growth, like where are we right now and how can we do better? So transformation requires a group of people who are ready to work together, but also work at different levels. And uh, most importantly, they have to measure and grow. Mm. Yeah, it's, what I hear is that uh, agile transformation is not pushing people into agile and then say we are transformed, but it's actually using agile processes and methods for the path itself. So it's uh, about uh, yeah, agile organization development. Yeah, um, uh, Really acknowledging what's there in both ways and then taking step by step. Agility as the mean and the end. Thank you. Well, maybe if, if I may join here. Um, what I really like about it is is it somehow also uh, confirms my my stance. I mean, transformation on a bigger scale 
is not possible if it doesn't start on an individual level. So, oh. and this is really something what I believe in, and and this is a tool which helps to reveal the st the system to itself, but also the individual the individual to itself. Mm -hmm. So that's what I really like about it. So thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Come with my, my five seconds and my five takeaways is more likely. It's a nice tool. I can see what we can do as an icebreaker. You would I use it as definitive not because not that much because I know you are people and uh, people are having this locked in syndrome. They say yes, yes, yes in the workshop. And then when they're going back to the office, they do exactly the opposite. So I'm more on, on that part, but uh, every, I support completely the, the reflection. Everyone coming up to explain the Archer transformation has nothing to do with TOGAF or uh, uh, from a software perspective, engineering person. This has been something completely different. And is uh, organization development and design is fully part of the leadership. If you want to, there is two other organization globally, the ODF, Organization Design Forum, or the European Organization Design Forum. Hmm. You have not only Agile people, but thinking that you can please come because they're all talking about Agile and I have not, not a clue what they're talking about. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Pierre. Who else wants to check out with a golden nugget? And, and Ranulf, you're way too modest. You have to explain, we work together on a big sheet of 5,000 teams, right? <laughs> and I stopped the, 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 the transformation. <laughs> yeah, like so often, right? And as you said, uh, why, does it, why does it not land, right? Why does it not land? And, and uh, when we leave the room... And, and, and here comes the point you have to take. There's, there's a point uh, I'm researching on a topic is... Uh, one is very large. Large starts with, let's say, two, three programs, let's say, five, ten teams. It start The mess is starting this level. When you have the layers and the business lines, if you have to break down the silos. And and if you address from a systemic perspective, you're on the right track, like you mentioned before. But a system, one person is not a system. So it's starting three, right? Oh. Is the, in Azure, is the interaction, how we interact them together. Mm. There's a lot of good writings in German. Mm. Is uh, Führung in, in change. There are a lot of very good speak addressing how do you, how you have to behave. It's mm. all based on negotiation. Then once you're at that level, you can really understand, you can measure something and even accepting that people have a bad behavior. Because like we had a conversation with Preben, is uh, some change come from frustrations. Yeah, of course, many. Yeah, that's important that we embrace uh, uh, also the so-called negative. Emotion. And you don't need, and you don't need to be nice all the time. Thank you. Anybody else? Maybe me. Uh, uh, my takeaway uh, is that, um, I like the format of uh, of the facilitation. Uh, is too light, is uh, uh, light enough to introduce uh, quickly uh, the integral approach and to uh, to go with um, in uh, one hour, maybe two hour, uh, go out with a nice uh, nice out output mm. to work with. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it gives you basically a lot of food for your transformation backlog, right? Everything that is yeah. on the uh, unhealthy stuff and it's a starting point yeah yes and, uh, what you pointed out very uh, nicely marvin is that you really want to bring people into the uh exercise as as, 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 as sustainably fast as possible right exactly. because you don't need everything without else. speaking about yeah. exactly without speaking about theory of integral of, uh, exactly. or anything other just use it just use it just practice it and what I wanted to say uh, as well is, yes, change goes through the individuals. If the individuals change and we create the conditions for individual change in the collective, and also we can uh, come together in more complex uh, organizations, right? 
and uh, at some point it, sh it shifts any other check out i know we are already three minutes over the time if not i'm then... new here hi guys i'm new here new to agile new to um the whole world of agile mm -hmm. but i want to say thank you um randolph just for your time and for showing us um this whole process so thank you yeah thank you then thank you for being here Ladies and gentlemen, it was my pleasure to host Rondo Spiner today. The recording will be shortly available on YouTube. Um, thank you for your participations and contribution. Uh, hopefully see you at the next Future of Work talks uh, in November for Digital Transformation London, Agile Lean, uh, Delivery and Coaching Network. Stay in touch. This is our community that makes us stronger. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Peter, if you, Peter, can you share the link for the of the channel, please? YouTube channel. Oh yeah, um, yeah, sure. Give me a sec. Thank you. Thank you.